I'm going to care for my students. All right, here we go. So, it's a guy, right? Standard function. Function name could be any letter. Typically, in, in your, at your level, in your math textbook, it's usually F, F, F or something. But you'll see H or G sometimes. X is your input values, inputs. And the parentheses, look at what I put right here. It's on your paper. It does not mean multiplication. This is this means a function of an input, a function of input values. And your x values go right here, your input values go in there. Mr. Marine came and demonstrated this for us during the warm-up. Now, I want you to think of a function like a machine, and you guys will recognize function machines because we did it last quarter. Remember it's a machine? We did this last quarter? You guys made up a few machines together? For warm-up, the input, what was the input for warm-up that Marine did? Nice, it was actually negative six, huh? The machine did something, it took that negative six and did something and it spit out, the function at negative six became what? What did it spit out? 23. Input, there's inputs, and then we got outputs. The machine. You throw stuff in the machine, the machine spits stuff out. Now, coming back over here, look at your hand up. Look at the next row. How do you speak it? How do you speak this in English? Thank you. How do you speak that? Hit it. Okay, so I want us to be speaking the same language. When you see something like that, you got to know how to say it. That's how you say it. Next row. Look at next row. Look at the word. Hit it. Okay, so you know how it says f of x? Yes. Can you just f of x? No, f of x. F of, you have to say it that way. Look at the next row. Ordered pairs. You're used to x and y. That's what you grew up with, right? Math 1, math 2. Now, I have the answer key to pull down in the three folder. Hit it. Same as last time. But instead of y, look at you guys. We have f of x, because that's what y means. So underneath this, on your own handout that I just gave you, go to write f. The way you say this is f at x. Write that in your own note guide. F at x. The function at x. The function at that specific input. I'll give you a letter. You guys with me? So I gave you this so you can make the transition in your mind from classic standard style now to function notation style because we're math three students. And look at the final row, Hernandez. Look at the final row on your handout. What used to be called the y-axis, there's a new sheriff in town now. It's the f of x axis. I even put a little star for you. Do you like my cute little star? Thank you. Watch this. Plot this point with me. Two, three. Plot that for me on your own paper. That handout, please. Two, three. We're going to compare plotting from the old style, standard form, to another new style. I'm going to put an arrow on the little point. Just write the coordinates. Two, three. Do that for me. Let's do the. Let's plot the the, the same point, but with the f of x. Vertical axis, look at two, three, do that for me. Plot the same point for me. Two, three. But look at the way we're going to write it now. Watch this. The input was two. Look at the way I'm going to write the output. The output was the function at two. Look at that. It's just a different way of writing. It's like code language. What was the function at 2? Well, it was 3. Input, the function at that specific input. What was the function at 2? Well, the function at 2 was 3. You just got to know that this means the specific output at that specific input. Let's do one more. You can see a deer in the headlights. Look, watch this. Uh, let's plot 4, negative 2. 
பார்த்தா வந்து Watch this. What is that? 4, negative 2, input output. Fair enough. Let's plot over here now with the new sheriff in town, with the f of x. 4, negative 2, do that with me. Nice. Close. Close. Right. Four, and then the function at four. What is the function at four? Oh, negative two. That's what it was. Input, the function at that input. Input, the function at that input. What is the function at that input? Oh, it's negative two. What's the function at that input? Oh, it's three. It means the same thing, it's just a different way of writing and, and making that small transition in your mind. No. Here we go. We're almost done. This is a very short lesson today. Um, put this to the side. Keep that to the side. And now you have your thug notes from yesterday. I could actually dig, dig out. Want to write this down? We're only doing one, one example today. Write this down. Write one of them. Evaluate the function at the given values. Go write that function, please. Right. Go write this down. I'll give you about a minute to write this down. We're only doing one example, A, B, and C. Okay. All right, class. This is the first time you've seen this. Yeah. All right. Um, Moreno. On A, on part A, what would be my input? One. So the input's one. So this function that I'm writing, that I just wrote down in the function machine, I'm inputting a one. And the machine is multiplying by 2 and adding 3. So if we did that in our head, 1 times 2 plus adding 3, the output is going to be what, Ms. Morales? Cinco. Cinco. Good job, Morales. So coming back over here, going back to our notes, the input is going to be 1. The output will be 5. Now. You guys are going to go to desmos.com right now with your table talk partners, and you're going to do this exactly what I'm doing, my desmos.com. You're going to type in the function. Okay. Um, I'm going to put you guys in group of two right now, shortly. Give me a second. So one way was to actually put the input into our function and calculate the output. Another way to do it would actually be to use... The decimals, hold up, hold up. So the decimals.com, I typed in my function. Here's the graph. So with the with the graph, what I can do is with my finger figure out all the inputs and outputs. So the input at one is going to be. I'm looking for one. Good job, Murillo. One five. Yeah. So you're gonna use your graph to do each one. So the next one is five. So 5, the input of 5 is going to be, I'm going to for 5 years. Well, you know, you're like a genius. So 5, and the output is 13. So input's the first number, output's the second number. Here we go. So that's going to be 513. And last but not least, the input of negative 2, I'm going to go to my graph. Negative two, negative one. Murillo is the man. So let's see. If I look at the x-axis right here, uh, negative two is right here. So I'm going down on negative two, and here we are. So the output would be negative one. So negative two, negative one, and we're done. I'm going to put you guys in groups of two. One second here.
I don't think so, Mr. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1.3? Yeah. Someone give Fernandez a hug. Oh, talk about the groups. Hold up, hold up. And negative 1. Here we go. So now, here's the groups. Oh, you had a question. Go ahead. Hit it. 